Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. You might notice that my lights have got a little bit brighter behind me. I noticed the last couple of videos, they're looking really dim and then I remembered I needed to change the batteries. <laughs> Most of them are candles, but some of them are not. So we now have, it's almost looking a little bit festive. Those of you that have followed me for a long time know that I'm not really the most Christmassy person, just for personal reasons, but I did get a little bit better last year. And this year I have decided that now up until Christmas for every week, I'm going to add a Christmas decoration into the background. So I know it's only November, but bearing in mind some people the 1st of November put up their Christmas trees, no judgment, it's just not my thing, but we have got a Christmas gonk in the corner next to my bottle full of lights. So watch this space. Every week you're gonna get a new Christmas decoration from me. So moving on to the royal stuff, we've got lots of gossip on this video. There has been some more news come out about the Invictus Games. I'm not gonna lie, it might get some of you a little bit angry. It certainly made the little stress vein in the middle of my forehead pop out a little bit. It's not 100%, but I think it has slightly reaffirmed that Harry and Meghan don't necessarily pay for their own visit when they do visit the Invictus games but we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video but moving on let's go back to King Charles's birthday we had some sneaky pictures come out from the arrivals of the royals and members of their close circle of friends arriving at Clarence house for the king's birthday dinner last night I think judging by what Lady Susan Hussey is wearing and of course the Princess of Wales I think that the dress code might have been wear your sparkles we saw a very dapper looking Mike Tyndall with Zara who had a sparkly clutch and obviously the lining of her dress. We saw Princess Beatrice and I'm presuming Edo was with her. Unfortunately, I couldn't catch a glimpse of what the princess was wearing. And then we also had a glimpse of Lady Sarah Chateau who is Princess Margaret's daughter and the King's cousin. And it reminded me of this lovely photograph I remember of the young King Charles then, a very young Prince Charles actually playing with his younger cousin, Lady Sarah Chateau up at Balmoral. And again, this is nothing that can convince me that this family aren't affectionate. It's just a story spun by two bitter people that eventually got told no. I'm in no doubt that His Majesty had a lovely evening. During the day he had been working on a new campaign launch which I fully support. After the King and Queen started their day with a private breakfast they then travelled to a distribution centre in Oxfordshire which redistributes food to 120 community organisations instead of the food going to a landfill. I think personally it's criminal the amount of food that we do actually send to landfill sites and I'm not talking the pack of grapes you forgot about that have got a layer of mould on them that you could probably treat people with penicillin. I'm not talking about the pack of chicken that was hiding behind the broccoli at the back of the fridge and you're like oh five days out of day I can't get away with it out to the foxes. The foxes are always grateful. I'm talking about the supermarkets that dump hundreds of thousands of pounds every week of food and it goes to the bins and it then, as I said, ends up in a landfill. And I'm sorry, with the amount of people that are so dependent on food banks and struggling these days, no one in 2023 should be going hungry and no one in 2023 should be disposing of food that can be consumed. Now, because of this endeavour, which is called the Coronation Food Project, King Charles is actually going to be the cover star on his very own magazine, The Big Issue. This magazine is one that Prince William supports the charity. We've seen Prince William actually selling it on the streets himself. And of course, the King went out and bought a copy, a little bit vain, <laughs> of himself. And The Big Issue seller was really chuffed because he gave him £10 and told him to keep the change. Well, you should hope so from a member of the royal family. But the money that they actually sell, these people are working when you see big issue sellers on the streets. A lot of them are actually homeless or they're in vulnerable housing. They buy the magazines, like it's like a franchise, they buy the magazines for two pounds at a time and they sell them for four pounds and they're allowed to keep the difference. As the magazine says on its website, it's about giving people a hand up rather than a hand down. So seeing as it is almost the season <laughs> and the fact that the king, if you like a royal keepsake, get yourself out into your local town. This is unfortunately only in the UK and take some of your change out with you. Not many of us carry cash these days. We've all become like members of the royal family since the pandemic. But if you remember, take some change out and get yourself one of these little keepsakes. And of course, the money that you give then goes on to help people. 
Now, as I briefly discussed in yesterday's video, if you haven't already seen it, despite it being the King's birthday, certain media outlets are determined to make it all about Harry. And I definitely think that they've had a helping hand in this. The first reports came out that Harry was in fact going to call his father. It was announced through the UK media, just in case King Charles had missed it himself. Nothing like calling his private secretary to alert this phone call coming through. No, the UK media that Harry hates, they instead were informed of this private phone call. The first in a very long time, I'd imagine, that he was going to give his father. So of course, today we hear confirmation that the phone call did in fact happen. Confirmation from media outlets, not from the palace, because unlike Harry and Meghan, the palace still believe in privacy when it comes to family affairs. The ice is breaking, some said. He spoke to Meghan as well, and Archie and Lily pre-recorded a video singing happy birthday to their grandfather. Yeah, you're doing it. I know you're doing it. I can hear you. I can hear your eyes roll from here. I know you're doing it because I did exactly the same. Admit it, you're just as sceptical and cynical as me now when it comes to these two. The Sun was more honest in their reporting, and I think it was a slightly underhanded dig, where they said Harry's camp actively made it known that he was going to call his father. It even made it onto the BBC website. Translation, they are making it very aware that certain people in Harry's camp notified the UK media outlets. That's how I read it. As I said, you think that Harry would put in a call maybe to a member of the King's household rather than media outlets, most of which he either has sued or is in the process of suing. A certainly interesting way to go around what would be a very emotional and ice-breaking personal call from son to father considering the fallout. But just as soon as these stories make it into print, the Express, however, has completely made this story not only dead in the water, but they have actually thrown Harry under the bus. Emily Ferguson writes, Prince Harry did not speak to his father despite the Duke, I highlight the Duke, briefing that he had planned to make the call. A well-placed source reveals that the story that Harry was going to make the call to the palace originally came from people linked to the Sussex camp. No call took place. Well, isn't that rather embarrassing? Especially when someone quite clearly from Team Montecito clearly also briefed the press that not only did Charles and Harry have a conversation, Charles had a lovely chat with his daughter-in-law, Meghan, and the children, Archie and Lily, sang him happy birthday. It certainly looks like that both stories were in fact leaked from people inside the Montecito camp. Whether Harry knows about it or not is a different story because there's no way Harry is going to believe that this leak came from potentially his own household. Instead, he'll be like, how did the UK media find out I was going to call my father? You can see Megan in the background going, <laughs> Bear in mind that it was only last week that Harry and Meghan's own spokesperson said that there had been no contact. In the story where the King's birthday announcement was originally released that he was having a party, Harry and Meghan were so upset with one headline saying that Harry had snubbed his father's invite, their spokesperson came forward and said there has been no contact whatsoever. So now we're expected to believe they had a family phone call. Charles was fine with Meghan. It was all hunky-dory. They got the kids to sing happy birthday. It's obvious that both stories were just both clearly leaked, drip-fed to the media so it could keep Harry and Meghan in the headlines on the King's 75th birthday. Either way, games are quite clearly still being played to keep the ex-royal Meghan and Harry Kardashian-style show going. Actually, thinking about it, that's probably a bit offensive to the Kardashians. At least they're loyal to each other. Now, speaking of loyalty, yesterday I did speak about the Invictus Games and the fact that it was the Royal Foundation for Princes William and Harry that founded the Invictus Games alongside a team of people. A minor detail that certain people like to forget. Another big detail that people like to forget is the fact that Catherine and William, despite the fallout already happening between Meghan and Harry, this was pre-Oprah, admittedly, this was pre-trashing the Queen as her husband was days, mere days, Prince Philip, before 
dying because he was so ill. This was the fallout that had begun with separating the royal foundations, Meghan reportedly bullying staff, making Catherine cry. Then you had their self-pitying tour to South Africa where they used the backdrop of South Africa to again say, we're not okay. The royal fishbowl was too much every time I hear a camera click. It was paving the way for the storyline of Megxit. Well, it, despite all of this happening, Catherine and William gave £560,000 from their royal foundation to the Invictus Games. It's an incredible amount of money, which made them turn over the biggest profit that the organisation had had for a long time. You know, over half a million pounds, it was much needed. The same year, Harry and Meghan cancelled a fundraiser for the Invictus Games that was going to be screened by Amazon. And it just happened to coincide that they had signed the mega what deal with Netflix, Amazon's rivals. So the newspapers first reported and said they'd cancelled this huge fundraiser that could have raised millions for the Invictus Games. Plus they would have got a payout from Amazon because they've signed to a mega multi hundred million pound deal with Netflix. Now Harry and Meghan did get lawyers involved where they threatened any media outlets that were pushing that narrative and said actually the only reason why they cancelled was because of the pandemic, because of Covid restrictions. But if that was the case, two things. Firstly, when the restrictions were lifted and people could start again putting on concerts and big events, why did that never happen? Secondly, they never did actually sue any of the outlets. They sent a threatening letter, but didn't follow through with it. So that makes you think if they didn't sue, then there is a good chance it's actually true. So despite Harry attacking his brother through every possible means necessary, even using court cases against the media to constantly throw swipes at his family, Prince William has done more through his foundation financially for the Invictus Games than what Harry and Meghan have done for the Invictus Games financially. Now, last year as well, there was a story that came out and it's it's still a bit questionable. No one really knows the ins and outs of why it happened. But the MOD stripped Help the Heroes, who were the organisation, the charity that had always trained Team GB. They were the ones that raised 27 million a year that went to the Invictus Games. Help the Heroes was huge. Well, they were stripped of their contract and swapped out for the Royal British Legion. The MOD said that they have more funding and resources to be able to continue training and supporting the veterans. But Help the Heroes, through various spokespeople when they spoke about this change, said how sad they were and the decision had absolutely nothing to do with them. So it's always made me wonder at the back of my brain, have the MOD stepped in to make sure that funding can be more controlled by them? Is it something to do with Harry and Meghan using the Invictus Games and using the veterans for their Netflix, you know, that that long, hotly anticipated show, Blink and You Miss It, Heart of Invictus. Because one thing that has never been clarified, again, has always set off a red flag for me, Netflix, and uh, I think it was Archwell spokespeople, said that the Invictus Games would be compensated. It's that wording, it's like Amber Heard with pledging, but they will be compensated for the documentary and it makes you wonder considering Harry and Meghan signed up a hundred million pound deal with Netflix to produce content this show was part of the deal that puts that money into their back pockets but they're going to compensate the Invictus Games I'm sorry I think a hundred percent of the proceeds should go to the Invictus Games so I'd be really interested to see if that is ever going to see the light of day what they got paid in comparison to what Harry and Meghan got paid. And it's even more of a little bit of an insult considering they cancelled a genuine fundraiser that could have raised the Invictus Games lots and lots of donations. Now we're on to the final story. This is what I was talking about at the beginning. There has been more negative news coming out about the Invictus Games. News has broken today that two members of the Invictus Games for Canada, which is less than a year away, have been sacked for no apparent reason. Sorry, not sacked. The wording is 
reshuffled. The DailyMail.com have reported that CEO Peter Lawless, a lawyer and a respected Olympic and Paralympic administrator who has been awarded the Diamond Jubilee Medal by the Queen in 2012, has been transitioned out. I love all these wordings for, for sacked, been kicked out of your job. They've been reshuffled, they've been transitioned, meaning you got the boot. Then you have Bill Cooper, the chief commercial officer, whose staff are reportedly very upset over his sudden departure. You can see here the messages that have come up, which have been posted under his post, saying that he's kind of shocked. It's quite clearly obvious the rug was pulled out from under him, they are also equally upset. Now, a whistleblower has spoken to dailymail.com and this is where it takes a bit of a turn. As you can expect, the morale amongst staff and volunteers is at an all-time low and Prince Harry and his wife oof, have become a significant distraction with all of their troubles. Basically, they are overshadowing veterans which is clearly obvious to anyone that's watched the last couple of years of the Invictus Games, otherwise known as Meghan's Fashion Show. One insider said that staff are also concerned about Harry and Meghan's security and other costs putting a strain on the finances if they have to pick up the bill. That makes you think that someone else previous years have had to pick up their costs. This is almost like confirmation from it, because why would members of staff be concerned that they've got to pick up the bill this year for their security and other costs? So are Harry and Meghan, as some of us have kind of theorised, but there's been no proof, are the multi-millionaires charging their security, their travel costs, their expenses, no doubt Meghan's clothing budget, and accommodation to the Invictus Game Foundation? So it does make you wonder, perhaps these two gentlemen that have sadly found themselves reshuffled were brave enough to stick their head above the parapet and say no to Meghan's travel and expenses. And this is sadly the price that they have paid. We know that Meghan likes to get people cancelled and Harry and Meghan do not like being told no. So if you believe the whistleblower from the Invictus Games staff, they are saying that they are sick of it being the Meghan Markle show overshadowing the veterans. And what makes it worse is Meghan could be even charging the foundation for all of her distracting, attention-seeking services. Everybody saw the shift from when Harry was just there by himself. He was laughing and joking with various team members. He was having a great time with people in the crowds. He was mucking around with people's children and you saw just a quick glimmer of the old Harry. The moment Meghan came, Harry assumed his position, which is behind Meghan, and she stole the show. The fact that Meghan is wearing hundreds and thousands of pounds of clothing, she changes her clothing through up to like three times a day she was doing, and she's wearing it at a charity event, a charity organisation, yet they seem to be struggling for funds. And the fact that a whistleblower has come forward to the dailymail.com and said that there are genuine concerns that they are going to go over budget if they are hit with Meghan and Harry's costs. It's about time that the Invictus Games needs to clarify exactly how much of their budget covers their founder and his wife's expensive tastes. Who wants to give donations and even big companies wants to sponsor an organisation when every single bit of footage and photographs that are released across magazines, worldwide media, is Meghan and her latest fashion choices? Meghan is capable of dressing down, of wearing baseball caps, or heaven forbid, maybe wearing some Invictus Games merchandise. She's got a fan base following, she's got Sussex Squad. They'd probably lap up little jackets and things like that if they saw Meghan, their idol, wearing them. Meghan could just sit in the crowd with a polo shirt on, a baseball cap, a jacket, but she doesn't want to blend in. She is using the Invictus Games to elevate herself. Harry and Meghan are famously being known as having the reverse Midas touch. Everything they seem to touch eventually turns to dirt. This time, sadly, however, it's not just a company that is going to be markled. It's all of the veterans, their families, the staff, everybody that makes the Invictus Games the incredible event that it is, is going to suffer 
because of the Meghan Markle show. It might be time for the people high up in the Invictus Games Foundation to really start thinking about if they need to reshuffle where Harry and Meghan are when it comes to the games next year. If anything, perhaps they need to completely change the deck. So that's it for me, guys, on this video. I will be back with you really soon. Tell me what you think in the comments. Take care for now. Bye.